The Orphan Boy Who Conceived Rolex A man is capable of changing his fate. All he needs is to be passionate and persistent in realizing his dreams, such as the story of this orphan boy named Hans Wilsdorf, who took the challenge of creating something big and left a mark on the face of the earth in the form of a wristwatch company which we know today as Rolex. Hello everyone, welcome to another brand new video on my channel. Today, I'll take you on a journey where I will share with you guys a story of an orphan boy who left his school and went on to become a business magnate by introducing wristwatches to the world. What's the story behind it, and how did it become the most luxury wristwatch brand worth more than $8 billion in the world? Stick to the video as I move on to the story. Born in the house of a successful businessman, Mr. Hans Wilsdorf wasn't just an ordinary orphan. He certainly inherited those genes and business acumen from his father. However, a series of misfortunate events took over the life of an otherwise happy family. While Hans Wilsdorf didn't have his father by his side to teach him what he knew about business and all the tactics, he still inherited enough from his father in the form of a running iron goods business that the uncle who was given charge of all the siblings sold the business and sent the boy to study at a boarding school in Germany. Time went by and Hans realized though he is not bad at school, in fact, he was quite brilliant in mathematics, but he left his school and joined an apprenticeship at a pearl-selling business where he was making some good bucks for his age. Here comes the real story you all must be waiting for. In 1900, after he left his school and some time later, his friend offered him a job at a pocket watchmaking company that itself had good repute in the pocket watchmaking industry. The money he would make there wasn't as good as he was making by working in the pearl selling business. However, it was a decision between passion and money. Now imagine if he had chosen money over his desire for a watchmaking business. You wouldn't have been watching this. So, the next time you're tested between these two options, you know which path to take. Back to the story. So, in 1900, Hans was a boy who was to drop out from a boarding school in Germany who had left his job where he was making good money to go live in La Chaux de Fonds and work at Kuno Corton, who used to sell high-end pocket watches and even manufactured a few to their name. He was hired as an English correspondent and clerk, which isn't what he wanted to do. But thanks to his English reading and writing skills, which got him a seat at the table, and the rest of his job was to create an opportunity for himself. You must have heard, do your part and leave the rest to nature and luck. Nature has its way of doing things beyond our understanding. Soon after becoming the clerk, he was handed the additional responsibility to wind the watches and perform a precision evaluation of the accuracy of the watches. The stay at Kuno Corton wasn't long, but he had learned what he required. The world is full of uncertain events, one after another. One such event to Hans Wilsdorf that he had to leave Kuno Corton to join the army. Nature surely had big plans for him. After serving in the army, Hans left for London where he joined another watchmaking company, but this time for a different role. He was in charge of sales. Imagine, you become an expert both in manufacturing and selling your product. What else do you need? Of course, a business of your own. As for everyone, well, not exactly everyone, but most of us, who have both the vision and the capability to shape that vision into reality, there lies one hurdle. It's the capital. Hans Wilsdorf wasn't fortunate enough to have capital of his own, but his brother-in-law David came to his rescue and there born the Wilsdorf and David Limited in 1905. This wasn't a manufacturing business, but a distribution business. At w and LTD, they shook hands with some Swiss pocket watch manufacturers that started selling those watches at a relatively lower price in London. The business was going very well at the time, but Wilsdorf himself wasn't really satisfied with the way pocket watches worked. First, they carried quite some weight. Then, watching time wasn't as convenient, especially when your hands are busy doing other things. So, he was adamant about making a wristwatch. At the time, the idea seemed a total impossibility as no one was convinced that all the machinery and parts of a watch can be so condensed and compressed that they fit into the size of a wristwatch and still be as precise as pocket watches. There were a few manufacturers who used to manufacture smaller wristwatches for women, but those served more as jewelry rather than a precision tool to observe time. 
Hans, on the other hand, was so stuck on the idea of making wristwatches that even he said long before producing a successful wristwatch, my personal opinion is that pocket watches will almost completely disappear and that wristwatches will replace them definitely. This is how much he believed in an idea that no one could conceive will ever work out. In his discovery of making the best wristwatches, he met several watchmakers from across the globe and kept on finding the answers to his how. And finally, a few years later, he founded his own company manufacturing the best and most precise wristwatches. And soon, in 1908, it made a name in the industry. This was the perfect point for him to decide that he needs to change the name to something easy, short, and interesting. He didn't know, in fact, no one knew, Rolex would go on and become such a big thing. On to that later. While everything was working perfectly, even after World War I, which shattered some very stable businesses, but didn't affect his business, instead it became even more successful as soldiers were equipped with Rolex wristwatches because it was easy to wear, and the time accuracy was also up to the mark. Everyone in the world thinks it was Switzerland where Rolex was founded. At least I used to believe that, but not anymore. However, as for every other thing in the world, not everything was sunshine and unicorns, because even after winning a lot of certificates and getting a Class A certificate for its accuracy, it was becoming difficult for Rolex to operate in London. The rising taxes on businesses and this German origin name of Hans itself became a threat to the business. Though he had already registered Rolex as a trademark for his company in 1908, moreover, he had totally changed the business name to Rolex Watch Corporation in 1915. However, problems persisted for him to shift, and so he decided to move his business to Switzerland. In Switzerland, now that nothing was bothering him anymore, his only focus became innovating his business further. He kept on working with his sheer determination and patience towards improving the business. Models like Rolex Oyster and Submariners hit the market in 1926 and 1953, respectively, and took the watch industry by a spell. Earlier I mentioned that he learned sales at a watch business in London. Yes, this was Hans' time to shine in marketing his brand. He pulled off such marketing and branding strategies that the world just couldn't ignore Rolex, from making water, dust, and rust-proof watches to later adding features of date and day, and lastly to hiring models that would prove the claims by diving into the river. Everything simply worked out in Rolex and Hans's favor. While it looks all shiny from the outside, Hans had his challenges as well. For one, his wife died in 1944, and in the name of her love, he started the Wilsdorf Foundation, which has 100% ownership of Rolex to date. However, Today, Rolex is not a struggling brand anymore. From just being a wristwatch that would promise quality, precision, and longevity no matter how you use it, to becoming a brand that needs no introduction. It has become so exclusive in the last few years that it is now just a luxury brand that everyone knows. Rolex isn't just a watchmaker anymore. It is a luxury watch manufacturer that caters to people from high society. This was the story of a boy who started with nothing and went on to make a brand that whether you can afford it or not today, you still appreciate what they have made of it. The passion and hunger for creating the best in class did pay in the favor of Hans and Rolex, and to this date, no one can deny the legacy that Hans left behind. That's it for the video. I hope you liked and enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for future notifications. Until then, take care of yourself, and I will see you guys in the next one.